you would, you, you turn in your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 3. chapter here. And, uh, first of all, we want to say that we're thankful to be here and we pray that you would pray for us as we try to uh, study and prepare for each Sunday school lesson and we try to uh, select some songs to sing. Um, it's, I do, I try to try to make it uh, as much in God's will as I can. And so I, I desire your prayers this morning. And Amen. I know Brother Jared desires your prayers also. He's going to be preaching the message, and it's always a, it's always something uncertain to me, and uh, it is to I imagine to everyone that uh, has anything to do with God's word, uh, what to say and how we're going to say it, and how that how that everything is going to uh, lay out, and how that we can get a message across, and that we can be a blessing. Because if if we can't be a blessing, if I can't be a blessing. Uh, I don't need to be up here, and if I can't, uh, I, I need to seek the leadership of the Lord in all that I do uh, in this, and then that's what I try to do. But anyway, uh, I just would like to say that this morning that when when you pray, remember uh, remember me and pray for me that I might uh, continue to have a clear mind uh, and a, a, a remembrance that I can remember with because. Uh, Nowadays, if I don't uh, make a note of it, I forget to eat, my dear. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's that way. But anyway, in, in chapter 3 of the book of Romans, what did he, he's asking the question, what advantage then hath the Jews? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Now, this advantage is the benefit, means a benefit uh, or, or profit or a gain or a promote. And so he's asking them, he's, he's writing down and asking the church, what advantage have they? And, and, and he, he comes up with this uh, much every way. And so it is important this morning that we use the Old Testament because we're going to see here this morning he discusses or he's talking about uh, circumcision. And, of course, if you look back in... In the book of Genesis, I believe it is, in 17 or 18 in there, where that God gave Abraham the, uh, the thought or the way to uh, his desire, and it was a token, and it was a, uh, a, a something that he should do of circumcision. He says that this is one of the things that you, you do, and all of your children uh, that are men, the men children, and anybody that you bought or anybody that lives in your household, you do it. Well, so circumcision is a, was a very important thing to the Jewish people. And I think that when we come forward into grace, baptism sort of took the place in that circumcision was a token. It was a promise between them. And this, when we, when we are baptized, we take on to the we we express to the world that we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and that's a token or a promise or a, a statement between us and those that are observing, those that hear about it, or those that know it. It's uh, we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and so here, as he says about the circumcision, is uh, the advantage is very much. And so it was the same thing with, with us this morning uh, and, and, and to those back then that we have a token or a, a promise or, or, or an action that shows to the world that we have accepted Jesus Christ. And we, 
we should have it in our walk, in our talk, mm -hmm. and, and, and all of these things, but uh, also there's none no greater, I can imagine none no greater than seeing a person uh, make a profession by uh, 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 coming to the altar or by standing and confessing that Jesus Christ is our Savior or going to the uh, watery grave and being baptized into that and making a statement saying, hey, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And it was the same thing with the, with the Jews then. They made this, they made this profession also through this. So, so he says in verse 2, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Now these oracles of God are the referred or refers to the word of the Old Testament, which Paul, like other uh, New Testament writers, and even Jesus himself regarded as divine uh, inspired, divine Amen. inspired. And so we see that this that he's talking about these oracles are uh, of the words of the Old Testament. Now over in the book of Deuteronomy, I want you to turn in just a few minutes with me in chapter four. We're going to read just a little scripture here concerning this in Deuteronomy four. In verse 5, he says in Deuteronomy 4, verse 5, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land where, where, wherever you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, these laws are these things that Moses has told them to do. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation, which shall hear of these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Amen. And I wish this morning that our country could hear this in a greater way and that the people of the world could look back on us and say, Surely... Surely God is their God, and that uh, they're serving Him. But listen, it's uh, it's not it's not as great as it used to be. I don't think concerning uh, how people uh, believe and how people serve God, because right. there's so many things going on in this country that our our country's letting happen that it's evident that we're not serving the Lord. We're not as close to the Lord as we should be, and and the same thing happened to the Jews when when Moses come off of the mountain, you know, and had the commandments in his hand, and, and he had left them there with Aaron, his brother, uh, to guide them. And listen, when he, he come down, he heard, he said he heard the shout of war, and they were dancing naked around a, a, this right. idol that they had made. And so it upset Moses to the point and Moses, Moses was eat, was was he was a gentle man, but he got upset about this and broke those commandments. And listen, uh, some of the times I think that our country gets in the same shape as the the <coughs> children dancing around the the calf, the golden calf, and they get in such a way that God uh, God gets a little bit fused at them and says, mm -hmm. "Hey, listen, I'll uh, I'll let you know." Uh, that I'm still on the throne, and I Amen. Can, listen. Uh, hey, he can he can do what he wants to. He can do it any time he wants to. And so we, as God's people, need to understand that He is still on the throne, and He can take care of anything that we have a problem with. And so He said here, uh, in in this in the scripture as we're reading, He says in verse seven, "For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them?" as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that his that hath statues and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. And so we uh, we need to think upon these things and we need to pray for our country. Amen. We need to pray for one another and we need to pray that that uh, uh, things will get better because he says, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. And so he's talking about things that they had seen and, 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 and take, take uh, remembrance of them, lest they 
lest they leave you. And this this morning may be something that we need to remember this morning. Is this a year down the road or two years down the road? If the Lord, if the Lord will help us and, and get rid of these things that's going on in our life, that we will remember them and we will not forget them and we will pray, pray to God and give him thanks throughout our life that this was done away with because it's a terrible time out there. And so he said, uh, especially in verse 10, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in horror, and listen to this, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together and I will make them hear my word that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may uh, teach their children. And this this morning, listen, he said, gather the children together if they can hear mm -hmm. people. They're being gathered. They're being gathered even today. Uh, hey, where are they at? They're at home sitting on the couch or doing something or another and they're afraid to get out and do anything. Uh, they can't go to the store and do or, or go to church or they can't do anything. So, hey, they're getting gathered, all right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think this morning that a lot of people this morning would probably uh, be in church that, that uh, are not, but they're afraid to get out. And so this scare that we're having it is a terrible thing. And he said in verse 11, And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven with darkness, clouds and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no form or no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And, and you can find this if you want to read any of it in Exodus 19. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone, and, and so we see that that was that now back in our lesson here when he's when Paul is talking to him in what advantage hath the uh, the Jews well they had much in the in, in their time but now in in verse three for <clears throat> for Romans three three for, for what if some did not believe shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect and of course we know this morning that there's nothing that's going to make God's uh, 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 belief or his word uh, any stronger or any uh, weaker about what Amen. we do. But it's, it's our fault this morning, uh, and, and when we have this unbelief and, and doubting God and all this, listen, it doesn't, it doesn't make his, his power any weaker because listen, he's, he's sitting on the throne, he's all power, and there's nothing that can make it any weaker. But he does hear our cries. Amen. And this, this morning, I believe this morning that people are crying to him. I believe people are asking him to help them. And so he said here, uh, 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 for God, in, 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 in this act 4, verse 3, and, and, and he asked this question in 4, said, God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar, Amen. as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in this say thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And so he's saying this morning, let every man be a liar. And that is the condition of the flesh this morning. And he's mm -hmm. and, 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 and and people just do not people just do not trust. God like they should. They do, that their, their, their trust is not, and mine is as weak as branch water. And listen, I, I, I need to have more faith in the Lord. I need to trust Him more. And, and so it doesn't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm put in my place this morning by this statement, let every man be a, 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 heart, a, heart, be a liar, because listen, you know, I'm just, I, I'm just not, not a whole lot of nothing. And, uh, uh, I think sometimes, well, uh, uh, I don't even I don't even know if God knows me sometimes when I, I'm getting out like this. But He says, but He says it five verse five. But if our righteous unrighteousness commends or demonstrates the righteousness of God, if our unrighteousness demonstrates the the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God un, unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. 
For then how shall God judge the world? And so right. if, 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 his, if, if all of this is happening and, and God is weaker than what the Bible says he is, uh, God forbid that we even think it, God forbid that we even say anything, think anything about it, because listen, like I said, he's on the throne, he's, he's, he's our savior, he's, he's, he's our, our God. And so God forbid, in verse six, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God had more abund abounded through, through my lies, what his glory, what unto his glory, why yet am I also judge a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may, may come, whose damnation is just. And he's saying this morning, uh, people, could, uh, people could preach a lie or, or a lie about God's uh, 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 goodness or his strength or whatever, but he says here, let us let us do evil that good may abound. That's not right. Amen. That's not even close to what. And and you know that's that's some of the the thoughts that some of the uh, uh, people had back then. But he says, whose damnation is just. Now, listen. What then are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jew and Gentile that they are all under sin. Amen. And so that's where, that's where we're at this morning. Amen. Now I want to read a little something this morning, if you would, in Romans 5. <clears throat> Romans 5. For sin, in verse 14 of Romans 5, for sin shall not have dominion over you, Amen. for ye are not under the law, <coughs> But under grace. Amen. What then shall we shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. We have no right to sin, period, for, uh, under law or under grace. And he says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. In other words, if we if we sin, if we sin and we sin, we're a servant of the devil. And listen, that is not pleasing to God because he wants us to remember him. We're his child, and he sent his son to die for us, and we're his, his child, and he does not want us uh, finagling around with uh, worldly lusts and worldly Amen. things, and, and that's what we do, and we get into trouble, and we serve the devil. And he says here, he says his, his servant, you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now remember this, whether of sin to death, because we'll get back to that. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have, over, ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. And so these are, he's talking about people that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmities of your flesh or the weakness of your flesh or the uh, uh, filthiness of your flesh. He says, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity or sin unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness and this Amen. morning if if we could just possibly stop and think uh what this means right here yielding your bodies to uh, uh righteousness listen and we can do that and we can work <coughs> on that people we would be a whole lot closer to the lord we'd Amen. be a lot better shape we would we wouldn't have these problems that we have but he says here Verse 20, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Now what's he saying here? When you were a sinner out there in the world, lost and undone, and on your road to hell, you were without righteousness. Mm -hmm. You didn't know about righteousness. You, didn't, you needed some help to understand your condition. 
Now notice, what fruit have you then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. And we this morning, he's talking about using this word ashamed. We as God's people this morning shouldn't have a, a big laugh about all the things that we did while we were in that sinful condition, but we should be ashamed of those things because, mm -hmm. listen, they were contrary to God's teaching. They were not, they were, even the thoughts of foolishness is contrary to God's teaching, and it's a sin. And so all of that stuff that we got out there and mixed and marred around in before we got saved, listen, we don't have no reason whatsoever to bring it up and to mm -hmm. rehearse it Amen. And, 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 and energize on it, if you would, uh, to other people and laugh and brag about it. And, and, and you know, uh, that comes up a lot of times when you get in with the people that you grew up with and get to laughing and talking about the things that you did. Listen. It's not, it, it's, it, there's no profit in it. Amen. And, and, and it's irritating to God for you to rehearse this thing and to remember this thing and realize that you still got it in your memory because it's wrong. And so what he says here, now, but in verse 22, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruits unto holiness Amen. and the end everlasting life now for the wages of sin is death Amen. and I want you to I want you to think about this this morning and we sometimes we don't we let it go by us but when we get out here and we have a job and we're working and someone asks us about uh, our job oh, uh, I'm making twenty-five dollars an hour. Oh, you're, you're you've got a good wage. You've got a good wage, and you should be happy. Well, listen, you shouldn't be happy with this wage. This wage is a wage that will never profit you nothing. <clears throat> this is a wage that will damn your soul. Right. This is a wage this morning that will will always bother you because you're working for Satan, this, this, the wages of sin, and what does Satan have for you this morning? He will grin and laugh and carry on with you, and, and you can rehearse all of these things. You can do all this, and you can do all that, and you're having a big time, and the wages is coming in. Yeah, his wages is, is paying you. The wages of sin is dead. Mm -hmm. And so he, you're just golfing it up, and you're laying it back in store where that you can rehearse it uh, 25 years down the road or whatever. But the thing of it is, that wage is a wage of, of death. That wage is a sin, and, the, and the, the last payment for this wage here is death. Right. Death here means a permanent separation from our Father God and, and our Savior Jesus Christ and from anything that this spirit could have enjoyed because, listen, this spirit is still working for those wages and right. it's, it's heaping them up. And listen, a lot of times you say, well, no, I'm not glad of that. But listen, when you work for something, you try to save some of it. And, that, and that's what the word wages means is that, that that's, that's your income and that's what you, you put, in, put some of it in the bank and store it back for a rainy day. And we do that. And we have it. I've got it now in my in my old bank back under thirty years ago, forty years ago, uh, when when you know when all of these things were really funny and when all of these things were uh, uh, the thing to do. But listen, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong wage. And and uh, uh, the sooner that we hear about it, and the sooner that we know about it, the better off we are. And and, and the, Bible, the Bible teaches us uh, about uh, how, how we learn this and all this. And it's through the preaching of God's Word. And, and, the, and the Bible says, how can they preach unless they be sent? And how can they uh, hear unless they be taught? Always, that's what we need. We need a, a, a lesson against the wages of sin. Amen. And what that wage contains. And it's come in a little, small beautiful wrapped up package and he slips it right to you every time you 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 come to come to friday and you get your payday listen 
there he is with that package of stuff, and you, you, you take it. And so these are some of the things that I mean, and that may sound a little bit stupid, but that's the only way I know of to get it across to people what they're getting when they when they get anything from the devil. Right. It is it is a wage, mm -hmm. and so uh, this morning, this is some of the things that you should think about because uh, uh, your your notice here. Know you not, brethren? I mean, uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. So that is <clears throat> like the opposite, if you can can say it opposite, of what the wages of sin will bring. The wages of sin will bring death. Death is a total death of the, the body and soul. Both of them will be, if they're not, if, they're, if, if your spirit is not saved, will be in hell. And the body will be there waiting for it. And so, listen, this morning, think upon this thing. But here, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Eternally with, with the Lord Jesus Christ and God in heaven. And you will have a glorified body. And you will have your glorified spirit. Mm -hmm. And you will be there in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and in, in, in the presence of God, enjoying life. But here with this wages of sin, the pay for that is eternal damnation, eternal uh, 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 agony. Mm -hmm. And they... He says in one place, sir, there will be even gnashing of teeth. And listen, that gnashing, uh, a lot of the, uh, I've studied someone, a lot of the Jews use it, they pop in their teeth. Uh, they, uh, whole groups of them would pop their teeth at, at uh, people, and, and that was a way that they would uh, 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 aggravate them and, and let them know that they, uh, they didn't like them and all this. And uh, uh, some of the, some of them, uh, I think even, uh, uh, well, I can think of the, the disciples' name, that, uh, the, the one's name. But anyway, this, this gnashing of teeth, and, and you know, even it could be biting and pain with pain and suffering and all this. But listen, that is the wages of sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't have to go that route. You just don't have to go that route. And so, your first thing is, is to start praying to the Lord and asking Him to help you with your condition. He's the, he's the only one He can. Amen. And, the, and the preacher can preach all day long and he can say, would you like to come up here and be saved? And all you have to do is repeat this or repeat that. Listen, it won't work. Amen. It won't work. And so you've got, you've got to... You've got to have that belief. It's just like the woman we talked about the other day that went up behind Jesus and touched his garment. It wasn't the touching of the garment. Jesus said it wasn't. He said, your faith has made you whole. Amen. And that's the same way this morning with us uh, that are uh, uh, saved. We, our faith through Jesus Christ made it ha possible for us to be saved. Amen. And so. Uh, think again on these things of the wages of sin because that is a terrible wage. That's the, uh, that's the wage of damnation. And so uh, hopefully uh, something here will be said uh, and, and to those that are out in uh, the world this morning, maybe some of them listening, I hope that you'll listen close and remember this because uh, it's for you too. So we thank you all so much for listening to our reading. Thank you.